Well, I got hilariously fact-checked by all of the trusted third-party Facebook independent fact-checkers, the Thought Police, and now if you post or share the video in question on Facebook, then it'll automatically get flagged as false. But in this case, I'm going to actually take the side of the fact-checkers because, well, they are right, and this needed to be done. Well, I mean, to be clear, they are right as of today, but in the future, things will probably change. So as of right now, Disney is not opening pediatric transgender clinics. Thank you for clearing that up, PolitiFact. That is, again, as of today, false. If you missed it, I'll leave a link to the video in the description below where I did pose as a real Disney executive using his actual name, Alan Bergman, who is the co-chair of the entertainment division at Disney, where I, uh, well, I revealed mostly the truth about what the company is doing. I did add one tiny, sarcastic, hyperbolic statement to my presentation that, well, Disney would be opening the pediatric transgender clinics later this summer, but uh, that's not true yet. Thank you, Snopes, for clearing that up, though. What I was really hoping for was for Disney to have to release a statement saying that they weren't doing that after being contacted by a bunch of media outlets asking them what the heck is going on <laughs> after the video went viral, but this is close enough. So what happened here is people started sharing the video and those who aren't familiar with my work saw it and many of them believed it because, well, it is rather believable. <laughs> I mean, like I said, Disney probably will end up doing this in the future. But until then, in order to try to protect what's left of Disney's failed reputation. Uh, USA Today and the others had to step in and say, no, it is, as of now, just a joke. What I was hoping for was something like the Yes Men pulled off in the early 2000s when they duped the BBC into airing a live interview with what they thought was a representative from the Dow Chemical Company who apologized for a chemical spill that... Dow Chemical had caused 20 years earlier through one of their subsidiaries, Union Carbide, that they never accepted responsibility for. It was a massive chemical spill in India, and it just devastated a small town, and they wouldn't pay for the compensation and the health care costs for all the people. And so they duped the BBC into thinking that they were <laughs> interviewing someone from the company, and then just all hell broke loose and the company had to issue a statement saying that they were not setting up a compensation fund. And it was a brilliant culture jam. The Yes Men are liberal lunatics, but what they pulled off there was brilliant. Just textbook culture jam. So I'm going to have to go back to city council next month. And I have another idea of another organization and an individual who I'm going to... Uh, well, impersonate, and see if I can dupe them into issuing a retraction for what the supposed spokesman said about them. But speaking of fact checks, I made a terrible mathematical error earlier this week that I feel I need to clear up because this wannabe teacher who was awarded compensation after a ridiculously insane lawsuit in New York, I don't know if you saw this video or not, but there were a bunch of teachers, 5,000 of them, who sued part of a class action lawsuit after failing the teacher credential test. And so, of course, they said that it was because of racism. The standardized test was racist. And so this is one of the teachers who was awarded compensation. And I took the $1.8 billion compensation, divided it by about 5000 and I just figured that this guy was getting $300,000 in compensation. But it turns out that he actually is getting $2 million in compensation because apparently they're not divvying up the, com the compensation equally amongst everyone who was a participant in the lawsuit. Yes, this brilliant man failed the test to become a teacher in the state of New York only because of racism. And then when he sat down and gave this interview, I'm not even going to play the clip anymore. You could hear a smoke alarm beeping because the battery needs to be replaced. And he's such a moron, he just didn't even know. And it turns out that's a meme amongst a <clears throat> certain group of people because apparently it happens so often. This from the quite brilliant website, knowyourmeme.com, where it details the smoke detector beeping meme. And it says that the smoke detector beeping and smoke detector chirping refers to memes about people not changing batteries and smoke detectors in their homes once they start emitting a repeating beeping signal to indicate that they may not 
function properly due to a low battery charge. In the early 2020s, the unwillingness to change the batteries in smoke detectors became a stereotype, just a stereotype, of course, associated with black people, prompted by a viral TikTok and series of viral posts on Twitter. All is not lost in the teaching profession, however. A teacher in Wisconsin has thankfully been fired after she tried to indoctrinate her first grade students with a Miley Cyrus song called Rainbow Land, which is obviously a thinly veiled allegory about how amazing LGBTQ people are. And even if it wasn't, first graders should not be singing along to any Miley Cyrus song. And so this story actually dates back to March when the controversy started, but the Local Board of Education just voted, finally, to get rid of her. Wisconsin teacher activists fired for flaunting rainbows despite school policy against politically charged imagery. Bye bye Also, New York Christian University fired two members of the staff just for including their preferred pronouns in their email signatures. <laughs> you know, most emails, you know, at the bottom it says like who you are and what position you are, you're the director of such and such a department. And you probably have seen that many of the woke companies now encourage their employees to have their preferred pronouns in their email signatures. <laughs> and so thankfully the New York Christian University forbids such an idiotic practice. And when two of the staffers continued to violate the policies, they were fired. And a school board in Southern California, of all places, which should not be confused with Northern California or places like San Francisco. <laughs> okay, very different, although the liberal pathogen has infected many of the communities in Southern California, but not all of them. And the school district of Temecula voted, I think, unanimously to reject a textbook that was mandated by the state of California to include in a social studies class because there is a three-paragraph mention, a celebration of the LGBTQP activist Harvey Milk. The Temecula School Board President, Joseph Komrowski, who has called Milk the P-word, as he is because he had a relationship with a child, but he's still held up as a hero in the LGBTQ rights movement. I think there's actually a ship named after him in the Navy, like the USS Harvey Milk. And so the president of the Temecula School Board has also instructed the district to reject any materials shipped from the state. So Governor Gavin Newsom is furious and fined the school district $1.5 million and is saying that this is cancel culture and censorship. And these same activists who are demanding that children across the country be indoctrinated with countless LGBTQ theory books are the same ones who got books like When Harry Became Sally banned from Amazon because it presents a counter argument to the transgender agenda. Oh, you didn't know that Amazon bans books? <laughs> of course they do. You didn't think that the liberals were going to stop their censorship just on social media, did you? They've banned a lot of books, but only about one or two of them get mentioned and defended by the corporate conservatives or the conservative Inc. political pundits. Other books that Amazon has banned, however, will never be mentioned. And speaking of books, I've been working on a new one and it's going to be great. It won't be out until the end of the year, though, however, but that'll come pretty quick in about three months. I'm doing the final rewrite right now and then I have to properly source all of the footnotes and then do the formatting. So it's going to be a little while, but I'm working on it and it's going to be well worth the wait. But until then, join my exclusive Locals community for $5 a month by clicking the link in the description below. It's basically like a members only Facebook page, except I'm allowed to say and post whatever I want. So click the link in the description below and check it out.